All right, let's continue now. Wow, we have a fantastic title. Women, leadership in tourism. Travel and tourism is a very diverse sector, ladies and gentlemen, but, well, women account for over 50% of the sector's wor workforce. Here's my but. But <laughs> very few actually occupy senior or strategic roles. Now, our moderator will be, for this fantastic session, Claudia Tapardel, former MEP, will moderate. Hi, Claudia, she is the, over there. And we're joined by Julia Stark, president of the European Women's Association. We met earlier, hello, Julia. Elena Kuntura, member of the European Parliament, honorable member of the European Parliament, hello, welcome to you. And Janet Seha, TV host and travel journalist, my friend is coming. And Cristina Nunez, managing director of Next Tour, who was the moderator earlier. Also, ladies, thank you so much. And your moderator is coming. Have a fantastic session. So, we are in our uh, session about women leadership in tourism, and I want to start by making you a promise that at the next level Global Tourism Forum event next year, this will be the first session of our summit. I make you this promise, and I, I will guarantee you that it will be exactly like that. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is an essential subject and it's very important to speak about women leadership in, leadership in tourism, but also about women leadership in general. Because we still have, even we are in 2022, we are in the 21st century, we have a lot of important women working in all the economic fields, but we still have a gap regarding the women that have strategic position, that have sea level position, that have very important position in the, in the boards of the big and important companies. And we still have a very important pay gap. And we are facing this and fighting this and discussing a lot of by, about this, but still we don't have the result that we should have at this moment. And also because we have here also the representative of European institutions, also for the politicians, we are facing the same reality. So. I have amazing speakers today, and I am so happy because they are representing from the private sector to European institutions, to the journalistic perspective, and also we are having a very dear friend of mine, Cristina Nunes, that is representing really the heart of the industry, because she is working directly with regions, with tourism uh, association, and with the private sector. So, I want to start with uh, Julia. Dear Julia, you are working every single day with the private sector, with the women entrepreneur. So tell me, which are the most problematic situations that women in entrepreneurship are facing? And if you have also some, um, some insights about the women that are working in the tourism and travel industry, tell us what are these uh, problematic situations that they are facing? And of course, the next stage will be to also um, uh, speak about solutions, but I really need your vision. Thank you so much. Um, well, as European Women Association, our main goal is to uh, build an ecosystem around uh, female founders and help them be more successful, more um, get them more access to funding. That's our main priority. And to do so, you cannot do alone. So as a private sector, we cannot do that alone. We tried since 2013, and we realized since pandemic, we need more allies. And for that, we reached out to corporates. Uh, we collaborate with European Commission on projects. Um, and of course, with investors like family offices, business angels, and VCs. And we do it in 14 different countries, mainly Europe, but since two years, also Middle East. And the challenge we face, we all know about the gender gap and the payment and the issues that uh, women 
globally face and maybe in some um, countries more. But if I focus on Europe, well, um, it's not as black and white as you would think and say, let's just pay women more because that gender gap evaluates gradually. It's not just from today to tomorrow, I'm getting paid 9% less than my male colleague. So it's a um, cultural challenge many of us women face and I think we've seen that mainly during the pandemic happening. We've seen that the caring, I would say, responsibility fell on female shoulders and that's not always something bad. As a mother, I think I enjoyed the pandemic for a few months. Finally, I was home and I could uh, spend more quality time with my loved ones. Uh, my mom got cancer at the same time and I had the time finally to be with her. And so I think the question many women in our ecosystem and community, and we reach around 50,000 women in Europe, professional women in Europe, they actually feel that they have to make a choice between their, um, I would say, social life, their family life, and their career. And I think that's, that's wrong. That shouldn't be the choice that we need to make. So maybe there are, we need to change some fundamental understandings of what is success and what is, um, how our work is being valued. Yes, I totally agree with you that we have to make this evaluation what really means to be successful for a woman. Dear Elena, you are representing the European institution, but you have also your background as a Minister for Tourism in the Hellenic Republic. Also, I am happy that here in the room with us we we'll still have some other women, members of the European Parliament, very involved in the travel and tourism industry. Josiane, Claudia, I am really happy that you are still uh, together with us. So, you have to fight to be in an important position at national level and also now you are in the European Parliament and you can fight to support the women in politics but also the women in private sector to obtain their rights because in fact it's a right to be in a, in a C-level position, to have more women in boards, to have a, a a balance between the, the payment between men and women. It's something that it should happen a long time ago, but still needs more and more support and more and more uh, pressure from the European institution that this became a reality. So I'm challenging you because I know that you have a lot of experience and I'm challenging you to develop on this, uh, on this topic. Thank you so much. It's open. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me here because I'm around uh, excellent guests and great speakers and friends from the European Parliament, but also from the sector that actually uh, I used to be uh, very much involved uh, as uh, I was a minister of uh, tourism for Gre for tourism of Greece, uh, 2015 till 2019. Um, I have to say that uh, the role of uh, a woman in tourism is uh, very, very important. Women's leadership in tourism is directly linked not only with the sector success, but also with the social economic growth, not only in a whole uh, destination, but also in local economies worldwide. And I have to say that to us women, nothing was given. We had to fight for everything. And even myself, I have, I have to speak about me. I did so many things. I'm a member of the Greek parliament from 2004 till 2019 that I was elected here in the European parliament. And I had to prove all the time. I was doubted all the time. So I, have to, I had to be twice as better, I would say, from, from a, a man colleague, because for me, they were expecting miracles. Actually, I was really lucky because I brought a miracle in my country. <laughs> 2015, 2019, Greece was really in a very, very difficult position. You remember the political issues, you remember the, um, the, um, uh, the Grexit, all this um, stability that we needed uh, unfortunately, was missing economic uh, crisis, uh, social crisis, and um, I was really 
uh, very happy when uh, I brought all these results because tourism, um, the truth is that brings really very fast um, uh, revenue and uh, also a lot of investments. And I have to say that I was very happy when four years later the results are, were, were really impressive. Uh, Greece uh, had uh, 18 billion euros from um, uh, 32 million tourists. When I got uh, the ministry 2015, we had only 22 million tourists. So in, in four years, I brought 10 million more, which actually was uh, the revenue, they were, um, the growth was big. And uh, at the same time, the whole um, sector of tourism, but also the sectors that they uh, grow with the tourism, like um, entertainment, uh, trade, uh, uh, restaurants, uh, hotels, everything around, uh, the growth was more than 37 billion. So it was a huge help for my country, and at that time was really crucial. I think that this was the period that I stopped being a woman minister, but a good minister for my country. And uh, I'm very proud of that. But as a member of the parliament, um, I have to say that um, I'm very optimistic because we can uh, change all these inequalities. And we can change it by law. As you said, women's on board, which is actually um, uh, one um, uh, file that was um, uh, blocked in the council for 10 years. Uh, the last two years we worked on, and uh, three months uh, ago was um, uh, voted in the... Um, in Strasbourg, and we're very, very, uh, how can I say, proud of this, because uh, actually make a big difference. Because now, uh, women on board, uh, on board's directive will be minimum 40% of women um, for uh, non-executive boards in EU companies by the end of June 2026. So all the countries, they have to uh, follow uh, the, the directive and also 33% uh, uh, will be in both executive and non-executive, which is a big achievement. Uh, also, uh, it's important to say that the member states, they will um, have to set up penalties systems for companies failing to comply uh, with these rules. And um, it's important to say that women, they can really bring a lot of success, as I said at the beginning, to um, uh, the companies and to the sectors, because they actually are, uh, th their mind, their work, um, they're complementary to men work. And it's different. So they can be really leaders, but, we have the pay system, which is not equal. So we work on that. And actually, um, because women uh, have lower uh, wages for the same work, as you know, in, um, already uh, the European Commission has introduced uh, a set of uh, pay transparency measures, uh, because we work on that as well, for pay information for job seekers, the right uh, to know the pay levels for workers doing the same work, men or women, uh, and gender pay gap reporting obligations for big companies. Employees also will have the right uh, to compensation for discrimination in pay. And this has been a significant step, but uh, more needs to be done. And the last thing, the funding for women. This is also very important because through the next generation EU, women, they can have funding, especially in SMEs. Uh, also the recovery and resilient facility. Uh, and also the member states, in order to receive adequate funding, they must have include clear goals 
for gender equality in their national recovery plans. Something very important also for the equality, because if we have equality barriers and we continue to support the equality bar uh, barriers, it's very difficult to have the resilience and the sustainability not only in tourism, in all the sectors, but because we're talking about tourism, and also don't forget that 58% uh, of women are in this sector. Of course, not in, in, in big positions, because uh, unfortunately, uh, all the, uh, as we said, low pay and low position are usually occupied by women, but we will change that too. So to finish, the last thing, uh, through European programs for training, upscaling, and reskilling is the way that we can support uh, the uh, effort of women to be able to have this sector as, um, uh, how can I say, uh, to have the same rights. Yes. Something that is obvious but is not happening. It's true. I agree with you, Elena, we have to prove more, we have to show more performance. You know, sometimes when a woman is performant, they are saying, yes, she is very performant. When a man is not so performant, they say, maybe he is not so performant, but he has great potential. <laughs> you know, I, I heard many times this uh, kind of appreciation and uh, I don't like it. But it's important and I'm really happy that uh, the European institutions are, are making uh, uh, steps forward in this direction. Janet, you are uh, a journalist for travel and tourism. You, you took interview to many important women working in the sector of travel in, and tourism. You are also a Latina mujer. <laughs> as yes, and also this is a big fight, you know, in the United States to prove as a mujer Latina that you are capable and to make have a successful career in the United States. So please, can you bring me the journalistic perspective on this subject? Because we really need, at European and global nev level, to, to make our voice louder, to, to bring the acknowledgement of this situation and to change radically the reality. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Claudia. I'm so honored to be on this amazing panel of women. It's so empowering and inspiring. Uh, yes, I arrived Sunday from the U.S., so it's great to be here. Uh, definitely proud as a woman to have been involved in interviewing all the women, um, not just in the US but abroad, that are doing amazing things from aviation, hospitality, uh, media themselves, but also as a Latina because I really do feel that that's why I'm in this industry because growing up as a young girl, I didn't really see myself in many ways. Um, and so for me, it kind of propelled me to this purpose of you know, finding a way and making something, making something in my life an impact, right? Leaving something bigger. Um, in the US, I think the last US census um, stats were the Latinos and Hispanics in the U.S. were 18 to 20 percent, so 61 million uh, people in the U.S. are Hispanic or Latino descent, which is a huge major demographic that I'm also Mexican-American, which I like to uplift and share their stories. Uh, one example is uh, last year I interviewed three Latina women pilots. Uh, so they each made history at different airlines uh, for different reasons. And it's amazing when I would share their stories, uh, people are like, really? Well, first they're like, how many women pilots are there? And then second of all, how many women Latina pilots are there? The thing is, it's visibility, representation um, in any sense sector or industry is really important because, you know, it matters who is out there, who's watching us, do they think it's possible, and it goes back to my childhood story. I didn't really see a lot of what I wanted to do, so I kind of just wanted to find and make my own way, but I think now we're in 2022, you know, it's different times, um, I feel it's, it's time for this movement for more women, more diversity um, in, in every sector, but especially tourism, hospitality, and media is really important. Thank you so much, Janet. Christina, dear Christina, we are talking since 
very long time about this subject. And uh, you are really a woman that is working in the tourism industry, with the private sector, with the regions. So you, we don't, sometimes we don't really need statistics or figures because you know the reality from the ground. And I want to hear your perspective about the situation of the women that are working in the industry because, yes, there are more than 50% of uh, women working in the tourism and travel industry, but they are not, even they are doing a, a wonderful job. They are very useful, very efficient. Still, they don't occupy the most important position uh, in the travel and tourism industry. And I think it's, uh, it's the time for a, for a change in the mindset. Yes, you, you're very right, uh, dear Claudia. Thank you very much for having me in this panel. I, I am so honored to be with such great uh, colleagues here, which uh, I would regret also that uh, Maria Rodriguez could not uh, make it today. So my first message, if you allow me, would be to recognize yes, the, great, uh, the great work she is doing in leading the Association Women Leading in, in, in Tourism. Um, this association uh, targets the fact that uh, although 55% of our workforce in travel and tourism is female-based, very little, very few of us uh, have access to decision-making position. And this association provides this space of dialogue to find which kind of solutions that are also tackled here by European institutions, by regulation or by other projects can we find, can we implement in order to empower our colleagues to have a more leadership position in, in the sector. And this follows very much the Sustainable Development Goal 5, which is really empowering female in tourism, in the tourism sector, but also getting into gender balance. So back to, to your question on how we, I could bring from the perspective of uh, yeah, my experience in the sector, I have a background in the tourism sector. I have an idea on, on what it means working in the, in the very front desk of a very well-known and visited destination seven days per week, 10 days, 10 hours per day, not 10 days, 10 hours per day during two months and a half, which is the season from where I come from. Uh, the situation has been improving since uh, that moment and the industry is making great efforts, but not all the challenges have been solved. By the way, we always tend to believe in, in, in the tourism careers, you know, in the front desk, but uh, we can also be destination management, managers. We can be chief strateg uh, strategists. We could also be heads of marketing or uh, heads of tourism intelligence, data scientists. So there is a, a whole menu of opportunities for, for us, female and male, to improve and, and drive this uh, sustainable change we've been talking the whole day in terms of which kind of models which is going to make the change of mindset. And, and there is a clear role for us female to drive this, this change. Now, uh, you could also run a European network eh, of regions that are dealing with projects in sustainable tourism. We, are, we also care about getting funding for our regions to implement, and if it is European funding, twice better. Now, what, what we do with this funding is trying to really to, to, make, to rethink the governance and the model of our sector, but also helping the SMEs. And what we observe, what I observe working with very good people uh, around 20 countries in Europe uh, at different regions, and local levels at the industry is that uh, there is quite a good, nice balance uh, of gender equality when it comes to delivering projects. So at technical level, we are there. Then in, perhaps not in big corpor corporates or in politics, we tend to disappear at that level. But uh, I see more and more leadership at destination management. We, had, we, were, we have been listening to great leaders earlier this afternoon. So this proves that uh, there is, uh, the, the situation is improving. So this, I also see sort of evolution in the way we, we manage and the kind of leadership mind we have. Also, the question is, what, what can we regulate and what we should incentivize? And, and that was tackled very well by Elena. So we definitely need to get rid of discrimination. We need to make sure that the corporate social responsibility ethic codes are strong and we don't face the situation that uh, equal responsibilities level, equal position doesn't have an equal salary, that we need to get rid of this. Now, we also need to make sure that companies are gonna open, be open to diversity and to attract talent, the talent that, that we need to drive this change and that we, not, we don't face uh, situations or stories like you mentioned, or myself uh, going into an interview and when I got the coaching, I am advised to look 
less feminine style as possible. This, this has happened to me. So this is something that uh, we, need to, we need to drive change, perhaps not through regulation, but certainly with education and through communication campaigns in this sense. Um, positive discrimination, I understand that we need uh, quotas, we need, uh, you know, we need figures. Perhaps we should not see ourselves as a target. I would like to be chosen because I have the skills for it, because then I will need to be sitting in a board with colleagues which uh, are, we will need to accept that you this, are a number of figures. That I am a number or not. So, and, and, and my final preliminary message will be that uh, we can't do this work alone. We need the other half to want this as well. And if I have the chance to be sitting here, it's because my other half is at home taking care of our family. So this work-life uh, uh, balance that uh, Julia mentioned, it's very important. And this is something that they need to want it as well. Thank you so much, Christina. It was really wonderful. That's why I'm so happy to moderate this panel, because for me, I, I told, oh, you already know, it's a soul problem, and it's my favorite topic. Julia, we have to concentrate a little bit our answers, because we need a one-day event for discussing this topic, and we'll organize also this. Are you agree with me, Mr. Bakchi? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your answer. <laughs> we are just uh, accepting yes as an answer. Dear, dear Julia, I want some concrete solutions from the, from the private sector because you are all working every single day with women entrepreneurship. So one, two, three. If you can bring me three solutions from the private sector that can be as soon as possible adapted and promoted. Promoted and implemented. I think I'll go uh, back to, I just heard a few times women do not occupy as many top um, positions, especially in corporates. Well, dears, I think first of all, maybe that's also okay, because the women I spoke to, they are not willing to pay the price of working 80 hours a week and being that CEO of that company. So I think first of all, that's okay if she chooses for so. If she doesn't choose for it, then of course we need a government and supportive system um, to make sure if she chooses also to have a family, that it's uh, possible. Um, another topic I think is important, funding. Um, I am less connected maybe to the commission. We do run three-year project right now on women entrepreneurship and uh, STEM uh, for girls project. But my heart lies with startup ecosystem because it's so tangible, it's so based on results. And um, there is no space for too much debate. You, the results need to be um, created. So when we work with um, f founders and investors, um, there is a certain, um, I would say, unconscious bias among male majority investors are men and still, and that's okay, by the way. But the problem there is that they do not naturally invest in female products and solutions. So one of the solutions should be educating more women to become business angels. I think that's of the, it has been proven, there is research behind it that women invest in women and that will improve um, the investment ratio of 2% of VC money that goes um, to women. And I think first that's one of the thing, like private sector investing, government supporting when it comes to children. I think that's the biggest issue that we have right now. Women are making a choice, family or careers, um, and that's not okay. And I think by investing in women, we create more money for the government. That's that, I mean, 50% of the world's population, guys. So um, it makes sense to focus on that, um, and that will generate more income, and that income can be distributed among those who are not in entrepreneurship. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Julia. Elena, we can be a strong voice in the European Parliament and at the level of the European institution. Sometimes also to impose that something has to move really quickly. Because, you know, the time is, now, the time is not our friend. The COVID situation affected a lot the situation of women in the travel and tourism sector and not only. So we really need like quick measures to be implemented as soon as possible? 
Well, uh, first of all, I have to say that uh, the inequalities, unfortunately, uh, seems that they will grow because it was not only the pandemic that uh, caused a lot of uh, problems and um, uh, women uh, struggle more than men. But also, uh, uh, there is the war in Ukraine, the energy crisis, uh, rising inflation, uh, the soaring prices in basic goods and services. And this will affect travel and tourism more. And everybody says we're going to have a very difficult winter, but a difficult winter follows probably a difficult summer. We're here to see. I, I want to be optimist, but the truth is that things are not looking very good. So, uh, women who work in tourism usually earn, as we said, uh, 10 to 15 percent less. So, exactly. already is a huge problem. Um, uh, in this sector, uh, unfortunately, has almost twice as many women employed um, as other sectors. So, and uh, uh, women's, uh, women represent as much higher proportion of self-employed uh, in tourism than in other sectors. So there, in the inequalities and, and, and the uh, barriers of uh, equality, they have to go down if women and SMEs and uh, small family business, and we, we, we want to survive. Uh, so, as I said before, the goals are, of course, all the directives and legislation and everything that, as a uh, European Parliament, we support, but also uh, they need data and they need, um, and it's important to have accurate and reliable uh, quantitative, quantitative uh, and uh, quality data to address the inequalities in positions, salaries, overall employment and education that women face. Another thing is to target holistic policies and action, and they have to must, uh, take place to promote equal pace, as we said, careers and business opportunities for women, because let's face it, they're very unlucky, the business and the uh, investments that they don't use and they don't uh, get advantage of the women talent, because women have different talent than men, and everybody knows that. And another thing, as was mentioned before, uh, from the private sector, the private sector and the public sector, they have to work together. And uh, they have to work together because I remember that when um, uh, I was a minister of tourism and uh, I, I had the, 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 how can I say, the opportunity to be accepted and uh, to follow my strategy, uh, then things change a little by little, and in four years we have all the results. And in change also uh, uh, in all the uh, matters of uh, equality and also the salaries. Like in Greece, they sign the, um, uh, how can I say, the, the work um, 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 hospitality um, uh, business, to make sure that they have, they will have the minimum salary, and mo and to be honest, was almost the same for the low-paid, of course, positions with the men's salary. So, if they work together, the um, two sectors, I think we can see a lot of uh, differences, and also another thing that I wanted to say, it's the cooperation. Um, it's important because you see in uh, England, for example, all this um, great resignation that happened. Uh, this is an example of inequalities that they have to be uh, down. And uh, also the private sector, and I close with this, has to give innovative ideas, exchange uh, know-how, best practices, and uh, the most important thing, to provide the necessary data to know what is going on in this sector between the inequalities. And, not to, uh, uh, and, and we have to think that we have to work together, men and women, for the best, not only in our family, not only in our society, but also in our work for the growth and the benefit of our country. So cooperation is the key word. Janet, you are a journalist. Can you make me like 
a commitment that you will bring more success story of women succeeding in tourism and travel industry to showcase our performance, our talent, our capacity to, to lead this, uh, this sector. Yes, and it's something that um, I've always been striving to do, and I love to, you know, uplift women's stories, the trailblazers, for example, the pilots. Um, yes, I can definitely make that commitment. I want to get more involved uh, for more women in tourism, and maybe, um, you know, for me, it really is uh, more role models. And being, I, I'm also going to be a mentor this um, this year at my former uh, alma mater in the U.S. And for me, it's really going back to yes, where we are, but also to the future generations because they are watching us especially any young girls, for example, who may want to get involved in this, in this industry and or pursue a career in this uh, travel tourism or media sector. So it's really important. The commitment is there. My three young nieces are watching from the States. Um, I hope. I don't know what time it is over there. But uh, I, I strive to be a good role model for them, and I want them and other women to know that they can get involved in here and to break all the isms, the stereotypes, or you know, barriers that may exist out there. And it has affected me both pr professionally and personally in the sense where I've dated guys that said, you know, and this is in LA, but guy was like, well, what, what guy is going to date a woman that travels as much as you? And clearly that didn't last very long, <laughs> like 30 seconds. But I couldn't believe that like a couple years ago I was getting asked that question just because I'm a woman and I travel. Um, and so it's really about overcoming those, you know, I don't know, barriers or stereotypes that just because I'm a woman, it limits me in any way, shape or form. So role models and mentorship, it's also important to succeed in our mission. Christina. Yes, thank you. I, I think Elena made a very good point in terms of the complementarity of the skills. So I think the, key, the, the balance is accepting that uh, uh, gender equality in, entitles diversifi diversification. So we do not need to compete for the same job positions. And uh, I'm very optimistic because I think that in this rethinking and regenerating mode we are from the tourism sector and the tourism destinations into a better one, we need this kind of uh, interpersonal skill. So there is definitely a place for us to, to drive this change in partnership. Um, I see also a trend to move from this more hierarchical or pyramid style organization management mode to more network, more community style. So this, this means an opportunity. Uh, this, this means the whole framework. I hope nobody's hurt there. <laughs> this, this brings a framework of uh, opportunities also for us to participate in this leadership. On your point, Julia, uh, about the, the choices uh, between family and career, I think that it, I don't understand how we still are in situations where maternity leave is still a problem for companies. I mean, we should not be tackled it as a problem. When I live on maternity for one year, and this has happened to me three times, I am offering temporary my job to somebody else. So I'm giving opportunity to another young talent like my colleague to, you know, to ensure there is rotation of staff. So why is still a problem? Why we cannot have more flexible schemes that allows us to choice? Not all of us are supposed or want to have children that we have to accept if we want and if we can, we should have the choice and the system should be flexible enough so that we can go back to job when we are prepared. But there is also about paternity leave and I don't see these, thing, these schemes happening except from some more Scandinavian Nordic countries where they found the solution. So for me what we really need is a cultural behavioral change led certainly by education, as we were saying. Now, we certainly need more data and more evidence eh, on how we okay, so, so enable us to monitor how the situation is doing and how we are making progress about it. And definitely more successful stories, examples on how ca cases that are working that can lead this, this pathway. So, supporting talents, having uh, inspirational stories, and trying to find the perfect balance between the private life and a professional life. So, my ladies, because we are always special and we know how to be special and how to be unique, I have an inv invitation for you to stand up for every important woman 
for every hardworking woman that is working in the private sector, especially in the travel and tourism industry, and that we will say that together we are stronger and we'll support this, the role and the importance of having more and more women having important position with a real payment in the sector. And because we have also here one of our co-hosts of the event, Ismail, I invite you also to stand up and to come together with us on the stage to support us. We have also the president of the Global Tourist Forum, and I invite them to be on the stage with us and to support us. Gentlemen, and because this is the most beautiful picture of this event, because you have <laughs> wonderful women on the stage, I invite our photograph to make a family photo, and this will be the message that we are sending to the please. To yes, exactly. Yeah, the <laughs> is the message that we are sending to the world that we are supporting women leadership in tourism, and tourism has to be the most one of the most important industry no pressure. in Europe and all over the world. So, power to the women. Thank you. Thank you.